Got to go with the Halloween feel anyway. All right, all across the country and here in Western New York, Halloween celebrations, as most of you know, are underway. The day is known for people dressing up in costumes, but where did the holiday originate from? That's a question some people have. Now, we want to join Go Live right now is Associate Professor of Anthropology Emeritus at UB, Phil Stevens Jr. Phil, thanks so much for coming on Most Buffalo today. We certainly appreciate it. So you recently just published a book. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, my book, yes. Uh, um, uh, a, a New Theory of, of Magic and Witchcraft. It's uh, it's uh, meant to be a, an anthropology textbook, but it's uh, my my hope was that, that that it's readable by any interested people. You don't need to know any jargon or any background in anthropology to appreciate it. <clears throat> and it's focused a little bit um, on Halloween too. So how did Halloween come about? Yes, this is a. a complex of several different themes. The word, first of all, is a contraction for All Hallows Eve, the evening of All Hallows, uh, the old word for supernatural beings in the Christian calendar, saints. Uh, the next day is All Saints Day. So it's the evening before All Saints Day. The masquerading and trick-or-treating elements uh, and the jack-o'-lanterns and other decorations, the fall um, I items uh, at, on people's doorsteps, all go back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. That's spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, in uh, uh, pronounced Samhain in Gaelic, which was an end-of-the-year festival right now uh, when... Uh, um, uh, contracts and and uh, uh, betrothals and other agreements were reviewed and new ones were established for the next year. Um, and on that evening, uh, the spirits which share the world with people were allowed free reign. Um, a, a large uh, turnips were carved and hollowed out and and uh, candles were inserted inside them and they were placed at the edge of the village facing outward. Bonfires were built in between them to keep the spirits out, um, but little piles of sweets, uh, things that spirits are known to like, were placed uh, uh, in, in between the uh, jack-o'-lanterns <coughs> to uh, um, allow the spirits uh, free reign, allow the spirits some enjoyment so that hopefully they would not interfere with the serious business of the next day, the, the, the day of the, of the new year. Uh, and these elements were brought into the U.S. apparently by Irish immigrants in the middle of the 19th century. Uh, and over time, it turned into a ceremony f largely for children lots of good uh, lots and, of information there for sure and there's more do we have time for more we're almost <laughs> running out of time so real quick we just want to thank you so much for all of your insight on this and you are obviously just so in insightful with all of this so Phil, we really really appreciate you joining us so we're finished sorry then uh no, can... no, we will make sure I'll, I'll come in contact with you later, get some more um, for our web story so our viewers can see um, all that Halloween has to offer. All right. Thank you. Very thank much. you so much.